you're not keeping it real out there. <laughs> they will find you. <laughs> they real. are droids. And the, they know real from fake. The real police are trained from age five it's to spot called. the realist and discard the not realist. The synths hey, of yo, sin. what's up, my fellow real humans? <laughs> are you fake? You've been Keep... found to be fake. <laughs> fake, fake, you? fake, Exterminate. fake. Exterminate, exterminate. I have feelings. <laughs> We're on a quest because if we don't kill all these bots, nobody whose name is Elon Musk nobody will buy will Twitter. Buy Twitter. <laughs> Twitter. <laughs> Oh. Hello, everybody. We're going to say weird things here in just a minute. How's it yeah. going? Yeah. Good. Uh, getting you a little late here today. No worries. Going to get you all the weird things that you need. All sorts of good stuff in just a minute. How's everybody doing? Uh, Real good. good. It's uh, it's about to get real busy up in this. Yeah. We're about to do a, a whole podcast, even. <laughs> oh. oh. All right. Uh, yeah. Big Jim 5. OMG, I A these cats on real, on be real. Yeah, of course we're on be real. We are. On hey, man. Hey, Big Jim. We're ready. I'm glad to be back, by the way. It's been a while since we've actually had the whole crew here. And you, yeah, and you were gone the past two weeks. The two well, last we didn't, two episodes. We didn't, we didn't have, have yeah. We didn't have one week, yeah. last week, and then, uh, and yeah, I was gone in, in Atlanta. Atlanta. Atlanta, Georgia. On assignment. On assignment, chasing down Brian Kemp and Mike Pence. Actually, I think I was in. I I, I wanted to go Did you to give either of them a tickle. Right, no, we, 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 we got to do, do the show. Let's do the show. I could I could delay the show more, <laughs> but I won't. Uh, all right, Andrew, are you ready to do it? Yeah, I'm getting cut out periodically. Oh, you which, are? Yeah, like I mean, the video like will freeze for a while, and I was mm. just on a video call without any interruption, so I don't know what's going mm. on here. But every now and then, just be warned. Uh, you know what? Uh, let me drop off the Zoom call. Let me call you back back in one minute. Uh, and. Uh, I'll just leave the meeting. I'll assign it to Andrew. Uh, and everybody, we, you may see us drop for just one minute. Give me, give me one second here. I'm just gonna grab I... under here and. In another minute, reconnection successful. Reconnection successful. Six six at six p.m. That will be the uh, I believe fourteen year anniversary of Operation Ice Scam. Fourteen years. God damn! Right. Wow. In a minute. Um, in a minute. It's been a minute. Okay, uh, Andrew, are we coming in clear? Or, or is it? Are you having any issue? Oh. Oh, well, I guess it would help if I sent you video or audio. Ah, uh, that's, that's, uh, that's a patient uh, man right there. That's on, uh, that's on me. Uh, Apologies. Uh, uh, please, let. Me, I wondered why you weren't responding either. I thought yeah, you were I know. very cold to exactly. me. It was by myself, <laughs> and, and I just saw your name, and I'm talking to you, and I'm like, Bryce, why can't I reach you? Why are you ignoring me? I'm and it was just painful. It was... <laughs> Well, uh, well. Hopefully, we were back on a stable connection. We can get started here. Yay! Uh, it's illegal to point out Bryce's mistakes in June. <laughs> That's right. It's illegal. It's illegal. Um, it's uh, uh, already. Bryce is kind of like SpaceX of like broadcasting. In a sense <laughs> that you're like, we all have opinions on it, but none of us is really qualified to like do the job. You know. <laughs> Oh, you started the stream a little late. Do you want to do it? Oh, no, no, no. It's I, fine. I, Leave it go. Got, I'm, I, how would you do it? Um, You're good. You're great. We're good. We're great. All right. Um, well, then uh, let's let's do the show, Andrew, in three, two. Hello, and welcome to the Weird Things Podcast. I'm Andrew Main, joined by Mr. Bryce Castillo. Hello, that's me. Justin Robert Young. Hello. 
and Brian Brushwood. That's right. Gentlemen, we've talked a lot about a lot of different things. It's true. I'm You're glad things. somebody true. finally yeah. spit yeah. At least we're here. acknowledging it. One yeah, decade I in, we can it. finally say we've been doing We've, been, we've been talking about a lot of things for a lot of time. I go out on a street corner. Many and people I say, are saying. What do you know about weird things? And they say, I've not heard of that. And say, so, I don't have any change on me. Right. Yeah. I don't carry cash. Yeah. <laughs> One of the things we talk about, we've talked a bit about like exploring the outer planets. Mm-hmm. And, uh, we've talked about space stuff, interstellar yep. travel. For our audience listeners, if you listen closely, like we, we cue in on things before it even hits the mainstream and stuff, because that's, that's what true. we are. Uh, We're early, early, things, early, early adopters, early noticers, early opiners. On, early on champions. Things. Mm-hmm. Yeah. One of the one of the things that we'd uh, early we talked haters, about were, yeah, that too. Actually. We've been talking about were rogue planets. Yes. Oh yeah. You know we're, we're big fans of rogue planets because mm-hmm. when people think about space, it's not something that people normally think about. For those listeners that don't know, like a rogue planet is basically a planet that doesn't or- orbit a particular star. It left its solar system, and the estimates for the number of rogue planets out there are extremely high. There could be some people say as you know maybe as many planets free floating as there are planets orbiting stars, which wow. means a lot. There could be million billions or trillions of rogue planets going through there, and our solar system makes a circuit around the Milky Way. Like we go around the Milky Way once every I don't know, like forget for like. When we get around the, to it, yeah, don't it's like three hundred million years. We or forget, get, like the, we get around, all right? We do. But we do make these things, everything is in motion and do these. And so rogue planets aren't just sitting there between one point A and point B. They're moving through space too. And we've Hustlers. talked about exactly getting things done. Playboys. We've talked <laughs> and thousands. Talk play girls. Play planets. Play planets. We've talked, we've talked about before one of the ways in which you might an intergalactic civilization might come about isn't just you go from your solar system to the next solar system over. Like our solar system goes out, we have the Kuiper Belt, we have the Oort Cloud, we have things that extend far way further out than we realize that come to the fringe of other solar systems. And you just might go from showing from planets to small to comets or asteroids, or even there could be planets that are further out in our own solar system. We've talked about Planet X to the idea of rogue planets. And now somebody finally has picked up what we're putting down. I mean, probably independently thought about it. But a, a new research article in the International Journal of Astral Biology talks about the idea. This is by uh, Irina Romanovskoya. Says, "Hey, uh, she says I propose that extraterrestrial civilizations may use free-floating planets as interstellar transports to reach and explore and colonize planetary systems. So the, we know the concept of a generation ship, which is like the ship that you just have multiple generations of people live on there, and eventually you get there." That's yeah, basically that. It's, and we've talked about this on here, that idea of if you wanted to just kind of expand outwards, you could use Rogue the Planets, which is what, you know, this paper is talking about. Well, huh. and, and and it's all a question of, like, uh, how much do you know with how much fidelity? If you knew all of, let's say, the next 27 systems nearby, uh, uh, all of the objects that are expected to uh, be swinging around the comets and so on, then you could, with the slightest nudge, have a subterranean, self-sustained uh, uh, ecological economy inside of a planet, buckled up, ready to go, and then just wait for uh, uh, whether it's you know you set off a nuke or whether you well, wait for the right uh, uh, comet to whip you out, and then you end up sort of like a tourist or a parasite spend a few generations orbiting another system knowing that the next comet is going to slingshot you over to the next well, one. Well, just assuming no Herculean efforts at trying to move a planet's trajectory, considering there may be billions or trillions of them, it might just be a matter of mapping them like the currents and say, hey, we know in 200 years something's going to come through our system that's going to work its way out past Alpha Centauri. So we're going to hop on board there and just hitching a ride like, like, without like, having like a, to, you know, a, a lower tech, lower tech civilization could do that. Yeah. So, so you're, 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 you're just catching it. Like it's the next tram. You're just even, like, let, let's all load up. That's and, even better. And we know because, where it's going because you could have a fleet of, I don't know, figure, you know, I don't know, let's say 200 battle stations 
uh, 200 battle stars or whatever. Yeah. Uh, 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 you, you link up, you, you hit that orbit, you mine that rogue planet for all it's worth. Uh, you extract whatever energy producing minerals or, or, or H3s there are and, and off you go. Well, it might, that maybe, but the, the, the challenges of trying to intercept it and to get resources from there might be costly compared to exploiting elsewhere. Just think about it like missionaries or people who just say, hey, we want to go to the stars. We're just going to, we're going to catch this, this current that goes out to here and we're going to go see because we know it's going to take us to interesting places. And just for people wondering, like, how does it survive without a sun? a squid monster living on your robot but <laughs> but the idea is where we talk about we oh i'd miss my son in the blue sky and all that like like you already live under the ice it's just different it's just ice going somewhere cool well yeah and, uh plus as as we've talked about before you know uh for extended trips uh the increasing importance of vr makes it so it's like you know what do, what do you care if it's an actual perfect blue sky day or one that is projected into your eyeballs, you're still going to feel like it's the most magical day ever. I mean, like I love VR, but also boy, did I know the difference between playing uh, uh, golf in VR with my friends than leaving my house during the lockdown. Uh, yes, but do you know the difference? Like what is the difference in anger of continuing to be unable to defeat the rat king whether we're in person or virtual what I mean, if yeah we're in vr right now and we're on a rogue planet drifting oh, between the stars i mean i'll tell you look i think that there are a lot of reasons for which everybody would understand okay this is the new normal right like so i, I do buy your premise in that like if we were on there then yes vr would make things more uh, uh, I would rather have that tool in the new normal than not. Right. Well, I, imagine if our subjective experience was essentially, uh, okay, okay, uh, this is going to be a dumb Brian thought experiment, and Andrew very likely will have very good reasons why it can't work. Get ready. Uh, Get ready. Justin will very likely have reasons why it will not be stylish enough for his interests. Uh, but imagine... Fashion plate. <laughs> imagine Justin Rapid Young. We get onto a rogue planet. Mm -hmm. We get all of our brains either uploaded into computers or our, our chemistry slowed down enough that... Um, uh, and we are, are able to, to basically... Uh, uh, pixel for pixel, fill our eyes, ears, all of our senses with a sense that we're on Earth. But instead of, um, <laughs> but we get to pull the go fast button and one at a time, different solar systems come to us. And, and, and so it's like, okay, we're all bored now, right? We're all bored? Great, pull it. Mm. Now what's actually happening is all of us are slowing down. Not quite hyper sleeping, but just yeah. you know, all of our everything slowed down. Suddenly, we're we're at Alpha Centauri, and now we get to go out. You know, like basically, I'm talking about a cruise. I'm just saying, <laughs> no, no, no. What, what, what you're actually explaining, <laughs> you, you are you are you are explaining God. the magic school bus. Like, <laughs> yeah, God is a you cruise are, you are, uh, cruise director. Exactly. Yeah, Brian. And the Brian, Lido Lounge will now be playing COVID. I Everybody, mean, come. Brian. <laughs> Brian. Brian.
that in your world. That's why your world's really cool, where you can just get like murdered and die of a horrible disease. You would much prefer that to this other thing in our reality. Uh, ooh, that's Follow? interesting. So yeah, that that we are gifted for having some sort of uh, a permanent death state, where in in their well, world they do not. Not necessarily that we have like the idea is that when you play a video game. Like, like in our reality, we think like, what are the worst things? We're like, I don't know, getting murdered, going through like being tortured. And if what if what if this was inside of another reality? Like, no, like that's 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 you can recover from that. There's a pill. It doesn't really last. There's really worse things than that. Yeah. You know, like, oh, like, oh, yeah, we have a thing like, oh, it's like, you know, you're getting, you know, attacked by hyenas for a billion years. That's a normal thing that happens to people here. Yeah, that's way worse. Yeah, that that, that is that is a a a. I mean, I guess we're, we're kind of getting into the, like, Dante's levels of hell, right? Yeah. Yeah, and I guess that's the point, is to sort of say, is, like, when you start thinking about, you know, realities inside of realities, if, like, if like what's your idea what the worst thing in the world or the most, you know, like, oh, what's better than sex? There is this thing called, you know, you know, well, we saw an avatar, apparently. You know, you just <laughs> yeah. stick your tentacles right in there. <laughs> You just F a planet, yep. you know? That's, that's what you do in that's, Avatar. That's exactly the place where people see tentacles getting shoved places. Avatar. <laughs> yeah. Hey, patreon.com slash weird things <laughs> is where you need to go to get uh, 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 your tentacle, a.k.a. your credit card, and shove it into the database uh, that gives us money. Oh, listen, I'm glad you brought it up, Justin. People don't talk enough about uh, tentacles, and nope. we are way too short on them. Look around. How many tentacles do you see in this very studio? Uh, 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 considering uh, um, anything I was going to say was going to be too graphic, uh, uh, none, Brian. <laughs> That's right. And is that number too much or not enough? Uh, not enough when it comes to the money we would like to make on so, patreon.com uh, slash weird things. Listen up, suckers. Yeah. Give us those tentacles Suck. at patreon.com <laughs> slash weird things. I didn't, ten, ten I didn't up, know pose pointing down. out that avatar normalized tentacle porn yeah. was such a controversial statement. What if that was where the idea began for Cameron and he worked backwards to build the rest He's of that He's watched movie. a ton of anime. Come oh, on. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. He's like, I need to normalize hentai. Uh, 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 how do I do it? Think, Jimmy, think. And next thing you know, <laughs> avatar, the next 15 years of his life. Just make, make, <laughs> making Zoe Zeldana do another take with a gigantic mech machine on her face. You heard it here first, folks, and hopefully Patreon.com slash weird things. <laughs> Are we, we're all in agreement that movie's going to make a jillion dollars, right? Oh, yeah. It's, it's going to crush. It's going to, and, and it's going to remind and everyone's, us. And everyone's going to complain good. about it, and everyone's going to be like, I don't know. It was, but if, if there's one thing that Top Gun showed us is that we just want to see the cool thing on the big screen yep. now more than ever, and it's going to be a lot of cool thing on a big screen. And apparently They're... we're more forgiving than ever now. <laughs> like, competency is the new A-plus in movies. There's a, a funny article by the font designer who was asked to do the new Avatar font. Cause oh, he's really? Because like, he's like, I, like, yes, I've seen the video. I've watched it a bunch of times. And then out of nowhere, I get the request to do the new Avatar. If you haven't seen it, there's a Saturday Night Live video uh uh, about why with, why Avatar's font is papyrus, one of the most uh, 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 beleaguered and and made fun of fonts in the world of it was typography. Like, it, was like, it was like next in like 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 um, Comic Sans is still neck broken swinging from the gallows, and next in line is papyrus. <laughs> and then Jimmy Cameron says. He looks good. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So in the video, Ryan Gosling plays. It's probably my favorite Ryan Gosling performance ever <laughs> where, you know, he uses, chose his papyrus and he gets, you know, stalked by people like, I know what you did. <laughs> you know? Is is this riffing on uh, Helvetica or uh, uh, some other font based movie that I don't know? No, 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 no. It's, 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 just, that... it's font nerd uh, okay. stuff. Yeah. yeah, it's, yeah just, it's just... just the fact that, you know, like. If you see it, if you knew it, you're like, the most expensive complex we ever made? He effing used papyrus? Papyrus? Like, <laughs> well, papyrus has impressive consistency amongst letter forms. So. But also, it's like, that's 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 what makes Jimmy Cam's it's, Jimmy Cam's, right? He like, it sticks it's to like, the basics. It's but it's like it's like every herbal tea shop. And, it is. You know, it's like it's just, you know, you go to like a, a craft fair and it's papyrus <laughs> everywhere. <laughs> 
Like, oh man. Uh, so anyhow, that is funny. But uh, hey, uh, you you know what's cool? What's that, Andrew? Main cooler than papyrus? Megalodons. Megs. Oh, yeah. Megs. But uh, new Bacon new and research. Megs. But you know, you know, it sucks. There's no more megalodons. No, what? no, dead. Right? No more. They all died. No more. Well, Jason Statham killed them all. But he did? Uh, yeah, yeah. Have you ever seen Meg? By the way, have you seen Meg? I haven't, but I've heard it's good. Oh, Meg is Meg is a treasure. A Meg is delight. Meg is. Hey, we're making a movie about a ridiculously large giant shark. Let's embrace that. And uh, Meg does, is super does, super does, fun. Does Statham punch it? <laughs> yes. They, er, everything you could want. It is. How dare you ask that, Justin? Does he punch the I, shark? Does hey, he... does 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 Bruce Lee use like kung fu? Uh, just, just the idea. I mean, because that's I mean, if I were writing the megalodon and Jason Statham was attached, I would just be like, many times would Jason Statham punch the shark, and the shark would be visibly hurt because, of course, yeah, you. You need to. It is the most Statham and the most giant shark movie you can imagine. <laughs> okay, it it, it is. It, it's like it's like it's people. Some like oh I don't know. It's sort of it knows what it's like. Like I love Armageddon. Like I love the movie Armageddon because they Michael Bay knows what the movie is. Yeah. He knows it's a, a larger than life comic book. He it's a comic book movie. He understood that. And a lot of people are like I didn't really like the technical or the science. Like shut up, nerd. Go back and watch Doctor Who and tell me how that's scientific. Okay. <laughs> Um, so, I mean, like, to me, like, I'm a very, a barely, you, barely veiled subtweet. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm as nerdy as you can imagine, but I like things that like, I don't mind if it's like, no, this is going to be absurd and whatever, you know, like, yeah, yeah. You know, like Thor, I'm not sitting there going like, well, where is Asgard? How does, how care. does the rainbow bridge uh, uh, factor yeah, into? If you are the one generating the centripetal force, how does that launch you? I don't get yeah. it. Yeah, I get upset when a movie is like when people are like, oh, the accuracy, or this is we're gonna. Be, and I'm like, no, like I don't care. But uh, anyhow, uh, so uh, one of the reasons there may be no megalodons is that apparently they may have been outcompeted by the great white shark. My friends, as you know, I'm buddies with great white sharks. Yeah. I have photos to prove it. Uh, apparently, because they coexist at the same time, but it looks like the great white may have like outcompeted it and out ate it. Which is not oh. unlike those eating contests where you think the big fat guy is going to win, but it's the skinny dude. But it's Joey yeah. Chestnut. Yeah. Uh, yep. uh, Justin is deeply uncomfortable with this question, but mm -hmm. if a great white shark had all of its teeth removed. Oh my God. <laughs> Unbelievable. Yeah, I go ask. And offered you a massage to just kind of gum you oh, on each of your limbs. You learned to start Would you with accept? That bit of the bit. Do you know what the crushing force is of the jaws? <laughs> I. He's a pro. He's a pro. So he's 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 not out to eat. He's not Andrew, Andrew, what Brian is asking you is if a great white shark was sentient and was a licensed massage therapist, yes. it had all of its teeth removed. Yes. Would you get a massage from a toothless great white in while, which, which, in which, which, each which of it, its gummed, limbs, it gummed your limbs? Yes. All the way up and down. Well, uh, I mean <laughs> It's, what's his Yelp rating? I, all right, I can tell the questions ahead of its time. All right, I acknowledge you nobody's are, prepared for this. Brushwood, this Brushwood is streets ahead on this one. <laughs> what is? All right, we're looking. This oh, this is this is yeah. No, this is actually <laughs> Andrew's like pictures <laughs> of great white sharks, which is being blurred. And that's me. Yeah, it that's is my it, head. Yeah, unfortunately, <laughs> Andrew, it is being blurred by your by your. I know, your, I know. Your, which your, only makes it seem more perverse. Uh, the and, big, and I would like to remind you how professional this shark is. Yeah the 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 blurry spot on the right is my head, and the yeah. shark just staring at my head. <laughs> so. Uh, uh, so all right, so so great whites. Uh, is it because they were smaller and faster that they just deprived them of uh, food, or were there actual like attacks between the two? Is it like a lion versus hey, wild that? dog situation? That's a great white. Hey, yeah. what's up, bud? And there's one massage. There's Maine. <laughs> How much for thirty minutes? Just a foot <laughs> massage. 
I'm, I'm trying real hard this to be was, the right, shepherd. So yeah, this was this was Brian's <laughs> thing. Brian envisioned a world that clearly he wants to exist in, where he would be gummed as a massage by a great white shark. I just why which, not get like an octopus to do? Because like, he a doesn't Swedish want massage. that. He wants. <laughs> and then we had to go like we had to get 30 <laughs> minutes before we found out that it wasn't like a cartoon jabber jaw it wasn't situation. Wasn't a jabber jaw situation at all. Where he was outside of the water. We were lying in the water <laughs> in because. The pool. Upside down. Upside down. Yeah, That's right. You had to be floating water so that down. you would have neutral buoyancy and you would be able to. Be, uh, you'd have so sucker the problem, marks all over. The with problem it. with the Megalodon versus Great White was. Apparently the Great Whites were a bit more nimble and able to out eat and basically eat a lot of the same food that the Megalodon wanted to eat. So, 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 so th basically th this they was were not the a direct piranhas. attack situation where like they were they were fighting each other for stuff. It was just that the big ass slow Megalodon couldn't couldn't survive anymore. They starved to death. Oh, I, the audio mark. is super garbled for me, so I'm having oh, trouble oh, okay. uh, uh, like I'm having trouble understanding. The uh, question was like like did the great whites directly eat the megalodons or did they outcompete the megalodons? Outcompete, outcompete yeah. is the evidence. Their theories of megalodon extinction have ranged from could have been parasitic, but one of the theories was that basically they ate all the larger whales and then whales got smaller and it just wasn't efficient for them. And this is a new theory: is the idea that the the great whites and it may have been may have been several factors. It could have been as the megalodons ate off a lot of the larger larger like whales, whatever they were preying upon, they then had to go for smaller fish, but the great whites were able to eat them better than they were. Mm. When when was the, the 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 last megalodon do we reckon? When 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 did this this old species die off? I think thirty million. I think that's about when they went, but let me let me give you a better three point uh, six they, million years ago. Like I said, I was off by a factor of ten. <laughs> eh, <it's fine. laughs> I wanted more distance. And that's the fossil record, so it, maybe it's wrong. But I mean, yeah, yeah that that's where no, we that, all get yeah, to three, shout no. Coelacanth. You never know; could be out there. Yeah, just hiding. Megacanth. Yeah the 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 question of how long could again, and when they say the fossil record, that means that's the last fossil. Not that yeah. we know that that was the very last one, but the idea is it probably within a range of ten thousand years or something from there, the other ones would have gone, perhaps. The Salia camp that Brian brought up was a fish that we thought had been extinct for a very long considering time, and then it showed up in like a fish market. And <laughs> the difference there would be that the areas where the megalodon would have hunted and eaten would be areas that we would have seen that. We would be seeing whales with big chunks missing out of them. Although the premise of the book Meg by Steve Altman, of which the movie Meg is very loosely based upon, was that they'd been living in like the Marianas Trench below a thermal vent. And it wasn't until that, that there was a layer, or below a thermal layer, it wasn't until that layer got disrupted that the Megalodon started to come up through there. Uh, and, um, am, am, am I right in that part of the reason everything was bigger, uh, you know, millions of years ago was straight up because the, ox, uh, the atmosphere had more oxygen in it? That's why, like, um, for example, you can get pretty big bugs, you know, about yay big. I'm holding, imagine, I don't know, a couple of yeast rolls. But uh, but 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 uh, dragonfly used to be as long as, you know, a six foot sub, uh, but, but because they breathe through their skin, that was only possible back when the oxygen concentration was much, much larger, right? So, yeah, for insects and stuff, yeah, like that's the theory is that that metabolism, the, the higher oxygen level could support larger insects that could fly and do other things like that. Um, remember, though, the largest animal that's ever lived is the Antarctic blue whale. And so, you know, that's alive today. And this thing weighs, it's like the size of 33 elephants. Um, and so we have in the sea, I mean, the largest animal ever blue whale. And then we've had on land, even recently, if you look in like the last few million years, when auction levels are pretty close to what they are now, you look at some of the large mammals that were on that walked around, nothing quite like the size of the, some of the sauropods, but you know, and, and that may, there may, that might've been oxygen level, but also it just might be that a, a evolution evolves towards things that are, you know, you don't bigger than an elephant on land. Not, not so good because your, your likelihood of destabilizing your habitat and being able to recover from what might be limited. Uh, so, so, okay. Uh, I read an article this week talking about how the ongoing joke for 
100 years has been that fusion is only 30 years away. Mm -hmm. <laughs> this time, it looks like it really is only about 30 years away. And there's a project, I believe, in France about the first uh, fusion reactor that they're trying to get online. Uh, once we get over that hump and essentially energy becomes free, we can have micro suns all over the planet. Uh, all of a Can sudden, I pause. I'm excited to see where this goes when Brian, we're talking about giant animals and Brian's like, well, let's start with fusion <laughs> now. That, that's the wedge to get the door open. Uh, and then at that point, when energy is no longer the problem, then all of a sudden questions of like, for example, carbon sequestration, uh, uh, the ability to strip uh, uh, carbon from the atmosphere or whatever, we can decide whatever flavor we want the atmosphere to be. Um, and all of a sudden, what have been science fiction questions of, for example, if you're terraforming Mars, how much oxygen do you want to have? Oh, wait, a nasty side effect of doubling the amount of oxygen means that when there's a forest fire, it becomes global instantly because the uh, everything is primed. Um, uh, what 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 would we like to consider that could be possible once even the uh, what the atmosphere is comprised of is just a matter of a ten to twenty year project? Like uh, obviously, right now, uh, uh, the first thing everyone would vote for was, well, let's get back to pre-industrial levels of of uh, CO two. But outside of that, I mean, do we stop there? Do, do, do we increase the amount of oxygen so we can all run faster and be bigger? Uh, do we reduce the amount of oxygen and, 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 and make us all more efficient? We're, I mean, we're, life on Earth is pretty optimized for kind of the level that oxygen is. As it changes or decreases, then we would have to adapt to that, which that's part of the problem with climate change is that uh, in, if it happens slowly, life will adapt. If it happens too quickly, it won't. And some things are going to have problems. So I would think, think take your idea and think about, is there a, a scenario where we could take a part of Yellowstone and build a dome? And the dome could be a real dome, a dome could be some sort of electromagnetic field or sonic field, and then change the oxygen levels there. Right. And, and, and likewise, what is the morality of aesthetics-based changes. Like for example, uh, again, you're, everyone's gonna have to take a big leap to join me on this, this ridiculous thought experiment, but assuming that you're not gonna make any species extinct, you're going to uh, be as healthy as you can be, why not add sparkles to the atmosphere and make every sunset also have a rainbow or something? Like, is there can a we... reason not to? Well, I mean, we can't even get Starlink without people. Hey, being... be, 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 yeah, 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 yeah. I mean, I'm going to need you to leap farther to join me on this. But, 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 but my, my, my question is. Well, no, it's my question. Oh, oh sorry. sorry. Go ahead. Yeah, but I mean, like, well, I, that's my. I'm like, well, yeah, people object to that. People object to that, which should be as simple. And there's astronomers that have some concerns about that. So when you start saying adding sparkly sunsets and stuff like. If providing if if providing kids living in rural areas of Alaska on Indian reservations with no access to the internet and giving them internet is controversial because it interferes with backyard astronomers, where do you think your proposal in like Ooh. the 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 Lisa Frank initiative? Yeah. <laughs> Oh yeah, <laughs> about how pretty it would yes. be. Yes, yeah. More, like more pretty sparkles. And then, okay, right. I pledge that by 2045 we will have pastel colors and sparkles in every sunset. Okay, I have one for you. Uh, the morality of we have we have fusion. We've fixed uh, climate change. Uh, yeah. Sure, we've also fixed the the economy. Everybody, everybody's happy. Yes, we have the power to laser etch the entire face of the moon <laughs> with the sum total of human knowledge. Okay. The, the smartest place to put it. Get well, I mean, everyone could see it. Yep. Right. Please look out. Yeah. Like Wikipedia is up on the moon. That's what I'm saying. Yeah, yeah. That's what I'm saying. Uh -huh. Rap bit my sister the other day. What? But Wikipedia is on the moon. It's on the moon. Uh, <laughs> with 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 with, with uh, efficient redundancies, so that when Jimmy uh, Wells uh, is on the moon, <laughs> when meteorites hit stuff or whatever, like, uh, what is the moral argument against 
putting the Encyclopedia every uh, Galactica on the face of the moon. That you're laser etching the moon. Yeah. That's the, that's, no, that's, that's the complaint. Why? You can, all, you can only see it for 12 it's, 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 hours, half of the month. <laughs> and, it, and it's on the internet. Wow. We need to bring in the Sierra Club here, Brian. Internet, I, I, the, the, I, I, dude, we, we are two or three well-timed solar flares away from losing most of the computers on the planet. Yep. Uh, that will not affect the copy of everything we know that on is facing us on the moon. All yeah. you have to do is we grind, grind it on a stone. So and there's you can nothing. See there's it. nothing else that we could do down here for that. I, okay. So again, I'm a moon. Uh, I'm a moon purist myself. Uh, What's so, so great about the moon? Uh, uh, it's a beautiful sphere, Brian. And when you don't like uh, understand. See, that's exactly a, a moon defacers <laughs> argument that like this is not a precious resource. Like, all of a sudden, you don't need to worry about Starlink because so, anybody right, who's standing me, and looking let, up can can know how to make penicillin. But the cheese, typical, if you mess typical, with the cheese. Yeah, there's cheese yeah. up there. If you mess with let the me, cheese, I'm going to be and by, that, and by that, I mean chi like energy. <laughs> mm -hmm. Okay, if we were like, Brian, there's if multiple like. multiple cheese. Like, let's fill the national, let's fill the Grand Canyon with water. I mean. I'm in, but go on. <laughs> well, I'm saying, like, I mean, you and I might be in. You and I might be very cool. Uh, 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 speaking of which, not that I'm going to call equate you to Hitler, but did you ever see the the early plans that Hitler had for like the Mediterranean? Uh, no. Was it? Did it involve the moon? It, that would have been next steps. But okay. This was the. There was an early like Third Reich plan. The idea was to basically like get the Strait of Gibraltar, like dam it all off, drain it out, and basically just create all this new land between Europe and Africa. Okay. Okay. Uh, and it may smaller not be a scale, bad smaller idea. scale, uh, <laughs> uh, private endeavor. You need a telescope to see it. It won't bother anyone. The complete archive of all of the Marvel comics catalog. Yeah. Laser etched in a very small corner of the moon. Anybody can see it from a telescope. Tell me why not. Also assume <laughs> That everyone's been fed and global climate change has been fixed. <laughs> gotcha. I, I, I was. Does it seem all I the reasons we shouldn't do it don't exist? <laughs> I was obsessed when I, I was obsessed when I was younger about coating the moon with mirrors because then it could be like a TV that could just be up in the sky. Yeah. And it could just we could just all look up at moon TV and just be like, ah. Oh, Actually, uh, no. no audio. I think about it. Giant uh, one mile by one mile e ink displays. Uh, you can mm -hmm. get a decent size. I feel uh, like this HD. is going to be the reason why we all go to the moon together, so we can <laughs> we can create this, and then on the way back we get Fantastic Four powers. <laughs> Okay, okay. Lesser idea. One green dot for one day, giant laser. It's the green dot on the moon day. It's only one day. Also, global warming has for, been fixed. Okay, for charity? For charity? Yes, yes. It's, it's, in fact, it's Trick a question. It's You're a, still a monster. Uh, You're still a monster. Defacer! What does Defacer! everybody Defacer! love about that Defacer! was? I was watching a, uh, I was watching a, a <laughs> I, this. I thought this was a fairly low bar, but I understand there's no, resistance. Yeah. I was watching a video that was talking talking <sighs> about some of the criticism when Mr. Beast did his Squid Games. If you haven't seen Mr. Yep. Beast's Squid Games mm -hmm. in a day, amazing. You know, he spends you know he gets a, a mobile game sponsor to spend three and a half million dollars so he can do a big Mr. Beast create the entire Squid Games like full scale. It's insane what they did. Uh, and then, like, there are people who are like, like, an article came out like, whoa, why didn't he use the money for charity? And it's like, why didn't they use the money for Top Gun Maverick for charity? Like, yeah, he's making it's, entertainment. It, yeah. And then he does have an entire channel directed to philanthropy and has planted millions of trees and all this. It's just this weird sort of like, you can't win, Brian, is what we're trying to say. You and can't meanwhile, win. I'm the asshole for wanting to laser edge the moon it's with the moon. my knowledge. Why don't you use that laser for curing the sad? It's already been cured. It's already been cured. People. Everything's been cured. Well, yes, in a perfect world, the only thing we haven't done left is put a laser dot in the moon. Let's put a laser dot yeah. in the moon. What about <laughs> the fact that we have it, the search to find more things to cure, Brian? Yeah, exactly. Ah, yeah. What about what about what about cure fatigue? We have you ever thought about that? We invented AI sentient bots and given them diseases so that we could, could cure those diseases. <laughs> Think of My all the songs fault. about the moon you're gonna ruin. <laughs> Yeah. Ooh. Yeah.
Yeah, yeah. going to lose a lot of music. I mean, I'm, I'm just going to say mm. we're, we're going to organize the movie. Oh, imagine a bunch of squiggly lines, and you could just run something over it, and you're listening to some 31. Some 31? <laughs> yeah. Is that the prequel? <laughs> yeah, they're a knockoff. <laughs> <laughs> they, they, they're a cover band for some 41. <laughs> They're a math rock cover band. <laughs> Please don't ask skinny, me their name. S- skinny lip. <laughs> <laughs> the yeasty bros. <laughs> uh, hey, do we, any, the, do we have any... Oh, sorry. These sorry. are we CDs we found in the dollar store. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> I mean, once you get fusion, things oh. get nutty. You get to do whatever you want. In, hopefully, yeah. I think, I think that's... I don't... I was going to play in this episode like... We really need to think about starting to think really, really, really big because we're we're entering in this age where there are certain people who are thinking very big and moving fast. Like Elon Musk is one of them. There are other people, and some of them. There's always people thinking big, but I have a whole book like about you know from people in, like the 80s and 70s who were these big thinkers, but they didn't understand how markets work or how to create businesses. Now you're getting big thinkers who are creating businesses and markets and stuff. Look at all the money. Do you know? Do you know what's going to launch? Like next month is like the largest blimp in the world. Cause I think it was like Larry page or Sergey Brin, you know, decided like, wait, wait, he really let's was get into blimps. blimps. Let's get into blimps. You know? Um, and that, like, that's a case of somebody who's. They're so big. They call big them. Thinker. They're so big. They call them blamps. <laughs> yeah. Let's see. Uh, uh, yeah. Uh, now, now that I've lost the debate, I understand that <laughs> really this is the classic question of of art versus function, right? Where it's like, how do you justify art of an expenditure of energy at any level in something that quote unquote doesn't make sense? You know, well, when, I, when it, there are so many quote unquote more legitimate uses. Yeah, for that I, I think I think we we we, we probably have a, a little bit of of a confusion between you know the discourse capital. T capital D when it comes to like criticism of art versus I think like the, the, the thing in my, in my low bottom hater uh, version of, of, uh, of, you know, crapping on your idea. The, the way that I would attack it is that somebody is making a cavalier decision on a public resource and few things get more public than the, the moon. moon. Yeah. You know, and uh, that, that's where you're always going to have a problem moving consensus on something that is universally understood well and i guess when it comes to the moon let's say the laser etching was not information you could put that on the dark side of the moon uh uh information's on the dark side of the moon but on the front side of the moon you you carve everything to maximize reflectivity yeah with the intention of their entire areas that are too dark business up front party in the back okay. mm. yeah, I, 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 well no the information's on the back yeah that's the party oh the party is the information the party is the information oh, okay Duh. Just wait the, one board, the boring one part is the album. thing that brings light to the planet yeah okay yeah okay yeah and a vhs copy of micro michael jackson's moonwalker mm-hmm. totally Same. totally uncontroversial i totally yeah uh, if you go to the LTAResearch.com, this is the company that Bryn's one of the co-founder, uh, funders of, and they use the example of if you have these big airships, if you have disaster areas where all of your infrastructure is gone, your ports are gone, roadways are gone, how do you get them supplies? And so that's what they want to do. Their first use case for ju- building really big, giant, awesome airships. Is, oh, you want to know but- what? I wonder if this was always, whenever you drove down south from... Uh, uh, the San Francisco, Oakland area down to Palo Alto, there is this gigantic airfield that had these massive blimps forever. And, and I had always heard that, that uh, uh, the Google people had bought it out and, and were kind of using it to test stuff. I wonder if this is, is uh, uh, the, the fruit of that labor. Yeah, they've got uh, facilities in Sunnyvale and Mountain View, so probably. Yeah. Have we talked about uh, the fact that I, I believe Walmart has announced like seven different uh, markets that it intends to do drone delivery? No, although I will say uh, all throughout South Austin, those little Coco drones, delivery drones are all over the place. Now, like, do, I, I see do them they actually constantly. land. No, no, no. These are not flying. They are rolling. Got it. And so they roll up on the sidewalks. They roll up to your house. We we actually got delivery in them once uh, from a place right around the corner from us. But uh, uh, these things are are 
in in use in in heavy use that I have seen uh, uh, from a few restaurants around the the South Austin area. That is crazy, awesome. Well, and I've seen I've seen these things on college campuses for years. Yeah, like I've always seen them on TikTok of ah uh, the robot fell over. I'm gonna help the robot. Um, so it, it just makes sense that they would keep scaling that up because it's clever. Yeah, it was. I mean, it's a little slower than. Yeah, but there's only the, there's only so many drones. I mean, the, the question is, what do we do with all that energy we're saving? And I'm just saying, maybe a second backup copy maybe, of Wikipedia. Maybe put all of Beetle Bailey on the moon. Be, okay, fine. <laughs> maybe what about a book? Maybe what about a book? Yeah, what kind of book? Uh, uh oh, what yeah. if? Because they make what posters if, of all what of if, this information. What if there was an ancient alien civilization that died because of some sort of like once every billion year meteor strike and they wanted to warn us so they made a replica of their planet by etching our moon with you ever all think of about the crater that? all the craters are actually yeah. the, moon <laughs> our, the moon is our the moon is our statue it's our memorial it's statue warning. yeah <gasps> have oh. you ever seen an okay. asteroid hit the moon uh, first, i'm just asking questions this is first, where this first, is where first nick of all, cage this is where nick cage realizes exactly that in the movie <laughs> uh congratulations <laughs> you, uh, you've gone straight to series on history channel <laughs> <laughs> I, I, i'm just i'm uh, yeah, whatever we, we've talked about different versions of this like uh uh, if if inside the moon there was a perfect, beautiful crystalline structure, but it was valuable in some way, is it okay to go bang up all those crystals, even though nobody's seeing them? Probably not for some people, and probably for people who want to sell that crystal. All right, listen. Who need that? Who need that crystal? I got that moon rock. I got yeah, that moon rock. I'm trying to mine this moon rock. Patreon.com/slash Brian's Crystals. <laughs> They're on the moon. We'll get them. Uh, do we have any picks? Yep, we have picks. I got a pick. I saw Top Gun Maverick. Boy, howdy. If you like planes, <laughs> is this the movie for you? <laughs> they got planes out the wazoo. They're flying them. They're looking at them. Are they fast? thinking about them. Bryce, they're so fast. In fact, my least favorite part of the movie is that that coward, Tom Cruise, <laughs> in the first 15 minutes did not do his own stunt of having a plane explode going <laughs> mock <back. laughs> If he had any guts, he would have done his own stunt there, but no, it happens off screen. Bruce Lee would have been in the play. Well. Oh, yeah. So, uh, uh, no. Jackie Chan would have done it all day. Buddy uh, Holly look- would have been. Uh, <laughs> oh, oh. Jesus. Christ. Look, man. Uh, uh, yeah, no, I, I, I loved it. Uh, uh, there was. I mean the, the 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 criticism of of the movie that I've seen, not Brian's criticism, but but a criticism <laughs> that, that doesn't I have seen. That guy wants to draw doodles on the moon. <laughs> no, no, I mean you you have a different a different yes. thing for which I, I find more constructive. But but there's been a, a a few things that I've read that are oh this is like a, a, a cynical repackaging of of uh, the '80s, which is obviously where Top Gun is kind of an I, I, iconography. Uh, uh, I am here to say yes. Here's Here's my money. Exactly. Yeah, right? Here's my money. <laughs> like, uh, uh, it's, yes. It's almost as though the whole world has said, can we have just one thing that's normal and familiar, please? Well, I mean, also, th- there's, you know, some ideas of like, hey, there are all these people are arrogant on, to a level because their skills have to be this level, right? Like, you are dealing with a class of people for whom, much like the original movie, you find out that the people that are challenging your protagonist, might not be evil they're just a holes <laughs> and they and they're a holes because they process these things slightly different uh uh there's been some fascinating uh stuff that i've read about you know our our chief antagonist in in the movie aside from the unnamed enemy <laughs> for whom uh, that's what i was about to say man I, I go where were you when the enemy was defeated yeah <laughs> uh, uh, but but the antagonist that you spend the, uh, most of the time with there were some third act changes to give him kind of more of a story, which I think uh, uh, matters a lot in, in the movie uh, of making it kind of a crowd pleaser. But uh, yeah, Top Gun Maverick, it was great. I liked it a lot. Uh, I saw it twice. You were not a fan. Uh, uh, I, I, I enjoyed both times. 
uh, the second time, the contrast was just turned up a little bit more. And I realized, like, the middle 40 minutes is pretty much garbage. Like, uh, like the beginning is excellent. The end is excellent. Middle 40 minutes, not good. I would disagree. But that's, that's the magic of cinema. Yes. We'll put that on the moon, too. Yeah. Also, <laughs> it's okay to disagree about it's Top okay Gun to disagree. <laughs> Brian yeah, Rushman I, says it's okay to disagree. I, 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 I loved it. I think that last act was great, and it's over the top, and I'm delighted by it. But, um, yeah, I, that's my take on it. Although, I, although I, I, sorry, go ahead. It, it finish, 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 finish your thought, Andrew. Uh, uh, no, that's it. Like, yeah, I, I, I can't say, Brian, you're wrong to not enjoy that middle act. Middle acts are often, like, for me, can make or break a movie, and, like, like that's been my problem with Marvel movies lately is, like, some of them the, just been like so there was a couple of really great moments in that in that dead zone of the middle 40 uh including the uh what sex is like over 50 loved <laughs> the most, it the, mo the most realistic <laughs> over 50 yes, sex scene it was amazing a lot loved of it. slowly laying down talking <laughs> With, and worrying about who's coming in <laughs> yes and it's suddenly only one of them has a shirt off and then it's over <laughs> love it love that <laughs> Uh, but uh, uh, yeah, 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 I'll tell you what it did. I, make I, I, do. I will. I will say that that movie relies a lot on Miles Teller's performance, and he uh, he, that's he, the he, son, he son of son of yeah, yeah son rooster. of Goose Rooster. Yeah, yeah. I, I think that like the more I've thought about that movie, I'm like, wow, like I this would be a lot less tolerable if I didn't care about Rooster and Rooster wasn't a, a as, as you know, for that role as filled out of a, and a character. as, as much of a cartoon as it is, like I, I, I never minded that he was living his life as a cartoon replica of his dad because it made sense, you know, somebody who would worship at that altar and, you know, all those things. Uh, I it, 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 to my surprise, my the first thing I watched after Top Gun Maverick was Edge of Tomorrow, uh, the most underrated, uh, most brilliant Tom Cruise movie. Full stop. It's great. Yeah, Edge Agreed. of Tomorrow is great. Yeah, especially that end act where they write down Wikipedia on the moon. All it right, was great. all right, all right. Uh, uh, who's next? Uh, I'll go. I saw. I saw a movie that. Um, I liked most of, uh, it's a low budget gem from, I believe 2012, 2013 from oscilloscope. Um, I, I, I want to say it's called cohesion or something like that. Uh, probably should know the name of the thing that I'm promoting. <laughs> coherence. Uh, coherence. That's the one. There you go. Uh, if you want to watch a low budget dinner party of, uh, people, uh, with, with, with poorly explained reasons that a comet would cause, all glass to explode and also split their house into multiple copies of itself, at which point all of them become distrustful of each other and you don't know who's from which house, then boy, do I have a movie I just spoiled for you. Yeah. Uh, 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 by the way, I, I, I think I only made it to the like mid second act just then. Uh, it's great. Um, uh, I liked it. I, I didn't, it, it didn't really have the punch at the end, but I think it's a worthy journey. Um, the acting is super duper believable. There's something about that chit chat uh, cadence that everyone has that makes me feel like these are all talented improvisers and there was less of a script than somebody might have claimed there was. Cool, nice. Uh, where'd you watch it? Uh, I believe it was, it's about to leave. Netflix, I believe. Netflix. Very the cool. Netflix. The Netflix. One of the Netflixes. Yeah. One of them. Um, I've got a pick. It is, you've heard me talk about it a lot, um, uh, but I want to show you something cool I did with it. Maybe we'll talk about it after things a little bit. Um, but I really like the Things app, the To Do app on uh, uh, on the iPhone. I, uh, I think last time I talked about it, I had it on, I bought it on the iPhone and I bought it on the Mac. And then over the weekend, I bought it on the iPad because... Um, uh, cause it's great. It is really good. Uh, I, I have gone in and like, I've been using things for a long time. And one of the, th the problems I've got with to do's, I think is that I had my to do's were too big. They were too many big. They were too big. It was like, it, like uh, do Monday, <laughs> check off Monday and Tuesday, you know? And so I, over the weekend, I went in and like really broke down a lot of the things that I do and, um, Things has a lot of um, the Things app has 
tags and it's got projects and and groups and all sorts of organizational stuff that is um really cool and and they've got a lot of tools for setting things to repeat because i do i focus mostly on shows and so a lot of the stuff i do just is going to repeat anyway so going in and setting that stuff up uh was great and now i feel i don't know it it, it was very cool i think if you are looking to get your get your stuff organized i like things the app things on ios um it's great. It's a little expensive, but it's not a subscription, and it's very good. A uh, quick edit to the Moon Archives. Uh, Paolo in the chat has me dead to rights. It was Amazon Prime, not the Netflix. On coherence. Yes. Yeah, there we go. Cool. Uh, cool. Yeah, I, I tried things forever ago. Yeah. And uh, uh, I, I don't know. I, I go in and out with, with, with to-do solutions, as I think many people do. But yeah. uh, uh, when, when it works for you, then... Chase that dragon. Yeah, because there are, there are a lot of productivity suites out there, and a lot of them are calendar focused. And yeah. I'm I'm just it. The nice thing about the to do list and the way things is, is it's very drag and drop. It's very yeah. you don't need to set five fifteen p.m. and you're scrolling through the whole thing. Just write down what you need to know, and it's there. I really dig that. Um, so things app. Thing. Andrew. So. I don't want to rant. I'm Ooh. not going to name names, Bryce. No, uh, I'm not. <laughs> I don't want to name names because TV and stuff is hard, and it's hard when you're like doing things with like a big legacy material. It is a miracle that anything gets made ever. And having said that, we appreciate everything that everybody makes. Also, please dish on why Obi Wan is so terrible. <laughs> I'm not going to speak to that in particular or anything, <laughs> Okay. but do you remember when like, you know, I don't know, 10 years ago, 15 years ago, oh, Star Trek that. fan movies started to look better and like, because people would start raising money and do VFX and stuff. And you'd watch and be like, oh, you know, for a group of people working with nothing, but actually so they did bring in actors from Star Trek to yep. go do stuff to like do this stuff. You'd be like... I love the fact that people did that, and that's really cool. But it still would look some, – sometimes an effect might look cool, and then it looks super cheap. You know, like, wow, why are you just shooting this in, like, a gravel quarry? That looks super low budget and cheap. And now I'm experiencing – I'm not going to name a franchise, but I'm experiencing <laughs> that with a franchise where not as the right, not only is the writing so watered down and weak that I'm looking at this going, this looks cheap. This looks so – cheap and just not well like what could be one of the most amazing moments in you know reunions and media is just feels like a crappy fan film oh, not speaking uh, about anything in particular we're no, just, course, I would hate that of course talking in particular. about the documentary brushwood a man in his mood yeah, exactly. yeah. The 2022 exactly. documentary exactly. about a guy in his quest to write down things on the moon uh i'm not speaking of any a franchise or a television show it's on streaming or otherwise but sometimes you can be so woke you're racist uh, <laughs> and i would describe that when you're very uh, when you clearly have a lot of faith in an actress and you really want to make sure that she's the star uh and so you don't put any kind of prosthetics on her face to make her a crazy alien, but in the opening scene of your show, the goon squad shows up and out comes Frankenstein and Dracula and a black woman <laughs> that in the nineties, that would have been 45 minutes from Spike Lee. Like, like that would have been a, a, a cut and dry example of how you are otherizing a, a, a black woman. Uh, but I am not speaking about anything in specific. That would just be a very we unfortunate thing I, to happen. I, it would be an I unfortunate just thing that would happen. If you want to help under representation, write really good material for people. <laughs> Don't put don't put people in a position where they have to make stuff that's really poorly written or uh, legit. And they, get and they get criticized for it. Uh, this is just a general, general question. General. How are you gonna write anything when you ain't got no hands? <laughs> I'm just saying in general, it's hard to write when suddenly your hands are gone. Uh boy. All right. <laughs> Look at that. Boy, wow. Uh, <laughs> hey, everybody. I, I, and also, like, I have this thing of, like, watching stuff where, like, 
I not name it a particular show. No particular show. If you went across the street and you grabbed somebody out of the Starbucks from here and threw them in some sort of fantasy sci-fi attire and put them on camera and did this five minutes later, it would look. It, it, I feel like I'm literally watching something. Like Star Wars felt like another universe. This feels like effing Burbank to me. Oh. This feels so the this, hypothetical this gen- thing. This general, general thing that we're talking about. The yeah. world just, feels like Burbank just lately. Just hire everybody with British accents. That worked great. You know, you have like unless it's you know one or two people who don't have them, but everybody else is British it was, accents. It was for all so your weird in this thing that we're definitely not specifically referring to. When, <laughs> when uh, I, he's, I was he's waiting showing, for somebody showing to up. complain about the traffic on the 405. And like, like, just... <laughs> when, when the person who's an a-hole at uh, uh, this uh, random protagonist job is just like, hey, y'all, back up. You're getting half price this time. Instead of like, they're British. Everyone's British. That's the whole thing. <laughs> oh. Oh God! I'm glad. This I don't know is what you're describing, but I would not want to watch that. <laughs> well, I mean, I would, nobody's referring to anything in, in particular. It's just the hypothetical it's, it's the situation hypothetical, that we're setting yeah. up. Yeah, yeah. Hi- hypothetically, I'd call it Obi Woof. <laughs> over. I mean, I was this so one's hyped. a dog, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> hypothetically, yeah, thank you for explaining. That would the, be a grown. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, anybody uh, anybody finish Moon Knight, by the way? I did. I didn't start it. Uh, the I last episode uh, would have been a fine first episode. Would have been a good two-hour movie, I think. I agree. Cool. cool. Uh, I have a pick. Ooh. I do have a pick. Okay. Yellowstone 1883. Oh, that's uh, one of the spinoffs, right? That's the one on Paramount, right? Yep, yep. Yeah. Taylor Sheridan wrote this. Uh, the lead actress in it is fantastic. It's a great cast. It, it Basically, it's people embarking upon the Oregon Trail, which I don't know if you realize wasn't fun. Yeah. Um, I, it I, was uh, fun, just not very easy. It, 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 it's, it's, it's revisionist in the sense it's trying to, well, I'm not saying it's revisionist, but it's trying to be sympathetic to like, you know, the, the indigenous peoples and everything and sort of the plight of all this sort of stuff. Uh I, I thought I really enjoyed it. Very, very, very much enjoyed 1883. Sam, I was, Sam I was, Elliott, right? Sam, oh, he's great. He's great. Trying to go down the Oregon Trail. Oh, my God. I'm listening. Go <laughs> on. Me. Go on. <laughs> Absolutely uncomplicated factor, Some, somebody, Sam Elliott. Somebody needs to fjord the, chalk the boat <laughs> to fjord the river. I only got Pretty one much. question. Yes, episode two. Episode two. Uh, it's it's great. I, I just really shot four hundred pounds of bison, <laughs> and I, well, I ate th- three th- that's and went on three or them. four. I forget which episode that happened. But anyway, <laughs> I I and comparing this to nothing in particular, where I watched something, <laughs> watching something where there are characters that I already familiar with. I understand the circumstances, things like this. Things should be kind of a slam dunk, and not and and I don't like oh you already pre like no no you can. Lord of the Rings was fantastic. And Lord of the Rings, and fans who had read those books and grew up with those books and, and knew every same detail, Harry Potter was fantastic. And we think about Harry Potter now, we think of, you know, that. Um, they, good thing they stopped at the last Harry Potter movie and they tried to continue the universe with a bunch of older people and take all the things that are fun and joyful about it out of it because that would have been a mistake. <laughs> um, but all of this is going on the moon. I'll have you know. 1883... There's characters you never met before, don't exist, and you care about their fates. You care about what happens to them. In episode two, you you just you're just like yeah, but that's only because they named moments them. Moments each year. Uh, hey, I'm Ed Sears. I hope to meet somebody named Roebuck and start a catalog. Yeah, I mean, uh, but I, I think like th- there are elements where you know, like like sequels are often the most well regarded of a of, of a franchise. The first movie after the the, the iconic one because. You have a shorthand, and that allows you, character-wise and story-wise, to tell take other interesting chances. And I think in our world where every franchise is being mined within an inch of its life, but between sequels and prequels and spinoffs and everything, that that's the most frustrating part is when those the, that shorthand is squandered so boring choices can be made or lame production decisions can be made. Because it's like you have that gift. That's what made the Marvel movies so great. I, it's what it's what has made these franchises that are now being mined within an inch of their life so great initially was that they used that shorthand to their advantage. And these are not. I wanted the Witcher. I got the Ewok Caravan of Courage. 
theoretically what about whatever, whatever that show would that, have been. That, that's often a thing that Andrew just uses in his daily life when he when he gets a I'm bad dinner saying, or something like that. I, I don't know if it's the, the process, but the, I believe there are showrunners and writers out there that could have knocked this out of the park, and we'd be talking about how amazing it is. And I think there's probably conversation like Stranger Things season four. I've been very happy with. I, have I, I haven't seen it. Yeah, way better than season three. Uh, way no, better I'm, than season. I, three. I, 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 I actually, I, I love the idea that uh, uh, they actually introduced a new antagonist because I was, I was certainly, I think that was the main problem, or uh, not a main problem. I think there was a lot of problems with uh, seasons two and season three of of Stranger Things, but one of them was that you've just invented a world where there are already multiple weird things happening, strange things, mind you. Uh, but you stopped with there's a monster in the Upside Down, and and it's like, yeah, no, you I, can make whatever, make uh, make. Uh, yeah, anybody can show up in this world. Make interesting things show up. There's a couple storylines that drag, like maybe involving an actor who went on to do some big projects for a while and some comic book properties who doesn't appear in scenes with other people, and his storyline really, really drags for me. But from like three, just drove me nuts. Like two, yeah. uh, two, and then three. Like three, just really went off the rails because there were just be moments where like. Slapstick comedy. Now it's serious. I'm like, uh, this does not work well together, and this is not scary. We're, again, I'm not saying this is perfect, but I've really been enjoying this. Season four has been, and they're doing longer episodes. Some of them, like last one, and they're doing a split. So they just, and then they're going to release in July two more episodes, and one's going to be like two and a half hours. Yeah. Mm. So I would say give it a chance. Give it a chance. They, they've a gotten chance. out of the kids being so super awkward, where they're kind of back to where you like who they are and where they are. Nice. Brett Gellman's character is actually, I like him in this. The other one, I always found him sort of the character was annoying, but here he's actually really good and useful. Cool. He's the conspiracy theorist guy. I'll put that on the moon too. Yep. Gentlemen, it's been lunar <laughs> and weird. It's been weird. I mean, why not? We fixed everything. We fixed poverty. We fixed... Yeah, yes. so you want us to say that's... yes, yes, fine, yes, put it on the moon, man. Do you, Get you, the do you think? Do you think three hundred then... years ago, if they looked at our modern technology, they would say that they that we fixed everything? They don't even deal with the black plague anymore. Well, they're yeah. going to be like our biggest <laughs> problem. Right. Is I think they would look they're... at our technology and be all like, "So, ain't no, you ain't got no smallpox." And we're no. like, "No, <laughs> wait, what's that?" <laughs> and it's like a, "You ain't got no, uh, 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 uh." uh Never mind. Here, here, you live how long? <laughs> yes, very long. Three hundred years. Three hundred years from Brian's moon project are going to be like, how are we going to clean up this damn moon? <laughs> this menace three hundred years ago destroyed our moon and then destroyed the equipment, and we want to get it. And then you're like, oh, he created something for us. Now we have a mission. Mm. Alrighty. Well, uh, uh, do does anybody have a heart out uh, before we take a break for after things? No, I'm uh, good. I'm good. I'm going to take a quick break, but I'm good. Uh, uh, okay. Um, Does anybody who doesn't want to destroy the moon? Uh, no, I, I, I uh, uh, but also we can't. We, we, we got started pretty late today, so we can't go very, very late. Yeah, right? yeah. I, I mean, uh, does anybody need a bathroom break? And does go, anybody need to leave? I'm, I'm trying okay, to get, go, yeah. go, 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 Oh, you see, he just loves it. And he wonders why he people it. care about it. He does. Hello, everybody. Hard. Welcome back to the Between the Things. Yeah, we're between it. Uh, uh, man, Justin. What up? I, I, I using Doing the Things app over the weekend, change, categorizing all my stuff. Yeah. They have labels. Uh -huh. They have projects. Yeah. They have areas. Oh, wow. Yeah. So you're really, you're, 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 you're marking it down. I'm, you're, 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 you're. Making everything uh, uh, fileable. Yeah, and part of it was uh, because well, I should probably I should maybe talk about this on after things, but I don't know. Um, because I'm I'm doing marbles, and we've got the marbles Patreon going now. Um, there was a part of me that was just like, there's always these, there was all these little things I need to do every week just to get marbles ready. You know, usually if I can just get X, Y, and Z done ahead of time, I could usually just roll up and and start the stream i usually don't need too too much pre-time um ahead of it but i didn't have any of that stuff in my in my calendars and then um you know i all the podcast stuff and work stuff and personal <laughs> stuff so i i thought well i should just i should go and categorize stuff now um and just 
just try and knock it out. Yeah. Um, cause you know, it, it, it I, I was thinking about this a lot today, but it is, a, you get this kind of contradiction when you use a to do app and you don't have little, st- when you don't have steps, right? We talk about, I mean, it, uh, uh, oh, breaking things back down to like, if you're steps. looking at a thing that is just actually too hard for you to comprehend and therefore you avoid doing it, then the idea of breaking that into four little things or the easiest possible step into it, knowing that you're eventually going to have to get there. Right. That's huge. Yeah. Yeah. Um, because I, I think I was partly in this headspace of, well, I was using things a lot and I wanted to use things all the time, the things app, uh, but, uh, but but I would look at it and I say, oh, I only have four things. I'm good. I'm good. And then all of them are like big to dos, big whole things. And um, you know, if they if they're multiple parts, if you got to do them out of order, then that stuff's not all there. But uh, uh, I'm really I'm 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 really digging it. It uh, made me feel good this weekend. So uh, you know, whatever you are actually like getting things. Like, like whatever gets you into the flow state of like, oh, I'll bang out that, and then I'll mm-hmm. bang out that, I'll ba- I'll bang out that. Uh, that's that's the key. It's I remember, um, oh man, who's Star Lord? Chris Pratt. Chris Pratt. When Chris Pratt was talking about his weight loss to get in shape for that role, and him like going from somebody that was you know a doughier dude, a stockier dude, to somebody that was like ripped, he described the energy he had. And it was like, all of a sudden, he's like, he would see a mountain and want to run up it. Mm. Uh, and I feel like that's the flow state that you get into when you're actually banging stuff out. When it's like, like oh, I can do this. Now the thing that used to be like, oh, mm-hmm. is like, oh, easy, great. This will just take a sec. Yep. But a boom. Exactly. All right, let's go. All right. We ready for some after things? Ready. Let's do it. Uh, all righty, Andrew. I'll count you in for after things. In three, two. Hello and welcome to After Things. I'm Andrew Main, joined by Brian Brushwood. Hello. Justin Robert Young. What up? Mr. Bryce Castillo. Hello, everybody. Uh, Hello, welcome to the After Things. I know. Yeah. 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 All right, I have my glass of water now. <laughs> 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 I'm like, uh, like middle of like, I'll drink, I'll drink the water after. You know, <laughs> nope. Mistake. That's why I'm not a pro, everybody. Um... <laughs> Uh, there's like videos on YouTube you watch where like, man, I love this content. I wish somebody would just tell this person to relax and to not try to sound cool or whatever, because it doesn't, it sounds like somebody trying to sound. Cool. I hear you. I'm, I've become much more mellow on scam nation. <laughs> I've waited 15 years to make that note, Brian, 15 years to get to this point. But I like, I, I can't, I ran into that the other day, uh, just watching stuff on YouTube. Uh, I like I like watching people do games and stuff on YouTube, and I there's this challenge video that shows up, and it looks it, it's like a cool idea, right? Like, oh, how can can you teach an AI to play this video game? Uh, very cool, very cool idea. And then you watch it, and he's just doing like all these jokes and all these bits, and it's like I just want to see you do the thing. I really don't need to be doing all these like little quips and little boos. I, don't know. I watched an interview with Mr. Beast on a channel called Coffeezilla. This guy, Coffeezilla, does a lot of like uh, exposes a lot of like cryptocurrency scams, things like this. And he was just asking Mr. Beast about his strategy. And everything he said was obvious, but it wasn't. And I was taking notes because it was just very much like, yeah, he's like, like that thumbnail and that title and what you promise, like you've got to tell people right right off the bat, they got to understand that they're going to get that. They've got to know that they're going to get it. And And you started thinking about like, kind of the strategies and stuff and you watch videos like well we're gonna get to it like he did his willy wonka video where he made the chocolate factory spent god knows how much money to do this and it's 17 minutes long he didn't turn it into an hour he didn't turn it into two hour special it was 17 minutes long and i'm like that's kind of brilliant because he just knows exactly why people are watching yeah and it's tough to do when your insane middle management robot tells you i want maximum viewer minutes Please figure out a way to make people stick around for the maximum amount of time. And also tons of activity, tons of uploading. Right. You need to be putting out a ton of videos. Like it's 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 very frustrating. Like I, I'm I'm thinking about marbles and stuff. I'm still working out some marble stuff, and I'm thinking about some video plans. And it's like I could do like I could do some stuff where like I put out a little video every day, and I can 
it's it's not that difficult. But goodness gracious, that's a that is a lot to flood the flood everybody with. He and, beast, Mister. I'll call him Beast. Uh, he <laughs> said something to which he said it's. He said, he said it's easier to get. Uh, he says it's easier to get. Uh, let me write this. I'm gonna say this down because I just I wrote it down because I'm like, oh, this is this is, you know, it left an impact on you. Oh yeah, I, I just I just it's like when I talk to Justin or Brian or you guys about things you, the the wisdom you guys have picked up over time and you'd go like, oh that makes sense, but I never thought about it that way. He writes, it's less effort to get five million views on one video than fifty thousand views on a hundred videos. Uh yeah 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 I yeah. agree and and if what you want and this speaks to you've heard me talk about it before my general philosophy of earning real estate of the mind if you if if you want a profound impact uh you're better off with a a thousand videos at 50 views than one at 50,000 views or what have you Mm. You you he was the opposite was saying that like if you do that he says it less effort to get if you get that five million views on that one video that's better in the long run than a hundred videos of fifty thousand views because that's ninety nine less easy, deals you have to make. He says it's easier. To, he says for him, it says it's easier to get that kind of thing. And then if you have videos that break through that barrier and to carry over, you know, I definitely agree. That's the case. If you are a hundred percent flexible on what the content is, if you if if you don't care what's in the package, then yes, that is the best thing to do is to figure out what does the world want. Let me deliver it. Uh, but if if what you want to do is build a vehicle to take something inside you and get it into the hearts of thousands of other people, then um, you know, like the easiest well, way, then, then then I would begin to disagree. Well, I'd say his point is if you make it like if you put everything into making something that has a lot of quality. If you're like like look at what you guys did with um, uh, world's greatest kind. Sk- sk- yeah, the world's greatest con is instead of like we're gonna do just a weekly sort of thing, you're like let's take all of our effort to put it into a thing, because then that quality level just goes way higher, and you're gonna reach signal people that before wouldn't have paid attention to it. Right. Let's say that like it, you know there's I guess there's yeah different strategies as you said, but that's well, the thing. And, we're and then on the flip side, um, um, I think I think a lot of fans would be disappointed if uh, we only did four episodes of Great Night per year. Uh, uh, oh, yeah. as opposed to showing up every week. But also, but, but you, you, know know right. do, you know, but you know how to do a great episode of Great. You're not, you're not trying to do Modern Rogue as dumb TikTok videos every once a day. You're, right. you, you have a pipeline to make quality material. Right. Uh, but, but, but I think, I think your larger point is 100 percent spot on, which is uh, there are multiple ways to play the game depending on, uh, uh, depending on how what your end game is. You know, over the yeah. over the weekend, I was talking with a buddy who's who's looking at starting some new projects, and uh, he he told me something strange because he's 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 got s- skills, he's made stuff before, he's made many projects before, um, and he told me, well, I've got these these four ideas that I'm going to do. They're going to be kind of a new. They're not in a thing that he was already doing. So, uh, so I'm gonna, I'm going to start these four new projects and. Some of them will be live. Some of them will be YouTube. Some of them will be edited. Some of them will be after the fact. And this this one of them that's going to be every week that's going to be my loss leader. And I had a, I had to pretty bluntly say like, hey, just for the record, like you haven't started any of these yet. None of those are leaders, and you definitely <laughs> don't get to decide which ones lose for you. Um, yeah. Uh, good luck, man. I mean, maybe that person has the energy to to put all their their. Uh, uh, momentum into that but who well and whew. what's and 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 i get it, i get heartburn just thinking about that it wasn't for a lack of wanting to you know huh? but it but it was we we really focused a lot on how to and the logistics and the medium um but i i had to stop this person down and say you need to pick one of those four things and decide which one you which is the story that you want to tell well, which one you want to do first yes like, like, there's, the, there's not to say that you're not going to get to all of them it's great to have a bunch of ideas uh, uh but you know you gotta one at a time. float these boats into the ocean and see which ones sink and and part of it is there, yeah how you build it and what the audience is go ahead andrew then there, there are people who are in love with the plan and not in love with the work and that's the thing i try to figure out very early on if i'm talking to someone like ah, they love a plan they love the idea of a plan plan because this plan gives them hope and it's a, it's a scaffolding for their future yeah. versus somebody who's really excited about the work and, and that that's that's something 
the more intricate your plan is and the more your plan involves counters upon counters upon counters because you've thought through this entire maze leading right up to success and all you got to do is follow this brilliant plan that's where you go off the rails because you are you are not adjusting for what this project actually is you are thinking in your head what the pathway is going to be and and you wind up i think over committing to it yeah in my opinion often although i'm sure that there's the perfect I'm, plan people i'm and assuming success of the plan approach like i'm super guilty of like just being in love with the plan and not the work and that's my all in planning intricate and then this step two and then this thing it's like, but but i will say for you main there was a every time that you've been successful it's been because you have gotten obsessed with the work because you have you have yeah. you have gone past the plan and you became no like put this out into the world even if it was literally just to me like in the writing it's like hey read this short story like at least you wrote a short story and there was and then it became the novellas and then the novels but like that was the whole process like do the process release the product observe what happens observe what people like and don't like about it and then move forward and that's being obsessed with actually being a craftsman and not being a a plan maker we uh talked about right before the first uh when we recorded weird things and that was uh all of you guys like robots being on real. command hold out your phones yeah oh, <laughs> we're yeah. we're being real so we'd be real like cypress hill so there's a <laughs> there's a uh uh uh, an app now called Be Real, B E R E A L, and it is once a day. You and your friends are alerted to take a photo, and so you take a photo where, where whatever you're doing, uh, it takes a, a picture of both in front of you and behind you, and then you see in that moment where all of your friends and family and followers are, uh, in that in that particular moment. Uh, I know a lot of people that work at desks. <laughs> yeah, there's a lot of desks, a lot of But 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 even then it's uh sometimes like people are are excited to share what they're working on at their desks. Other times people uh like I definitely will get up, take four steps, open a door <laughs> and there's a tree. <laughs> I'm, I'm at work. <laughs> uh but but uh what I love about it is it's one of it it's the only social network that causes me to think more about what I'm doing than than experience FOMO for what other people are doing. It's like it's like, am I proud of my appearance, of 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 how happy I am, of where I am, of what I'm working on, of what I'm doing. Um and, he's making burgers. Uh right now? Well it, honor be real. Oh, right now. Oh, ask uh, her to save me one. Uh like <laughs> that alone is kind of a cool and it, it's almost as though Bryce everything, is doing weird things. <laughs> it's almost as though everything else is everybody else participating are accountability partners. Where uh, and and you don't have to post one if you know well, and, it's not the right moment. And that's what I like. Like I, I think you can tell that they really want this idea of like uh, you're going to be late if you don't post on time, and then people will see that you're late. Um, but like that's the nice thing about it is like. I don't, if I don't have anything going on, I don't have to post. Right. And I can post when I have something going on. And plus also, and if, it, if, if there's one time I could think of that nobody wants to post, we're all playing Wordle, Wordle anyway. So, <laughs> Yeah, I mean, I, I, I think what's fascinating to me is from a network side when they determine what time it is. Because sometimes mm -hmm. it's in the morning, sometimes it's in the middle of the day, sometimes it is at in, in the evening. I wonder whether or not, because uh, the, the way that Bryce brought this to us was because there had been some media around uh, uh, friend groups for younger users being uh, decimated because the Be Real has uh, everybody else hanging out and you're on the outside looking in. And so you feel FOMO and everything. But like, I do wonder whether or not this has to be a, a, a thing that is policed in schools. If, if, if the be real happens at, at during school hours, oh. do they want to go uh, to not have that? Are they judging by your age, whether or not it's cool to give you a time collectively uh, of, you know, between the hours of eight and two? Yeah. And, and I guess also like, uh, let's say you're midway through a really interesting, you know, uh, algebra proof or whatever. And all of a sudden you, you, you know that it's be real o'clock. It's like, okay, all of you could take pic your picture showing that you're at class. Go for it. Now we're done. Uh, 
that that feels generally pro social to me. Is it is it the same time every day? No, nope. no, it's different. Changes. You never know. So that implies that if they're running efficiently, they're going to optimize for whenever they get the highest level of engagement. So if they're giving it to kids during their school and they're getting down, not so many engagements, and probably they're going to move it to three o'clock or whatever. Mm. Yeah, in general, I found. It's either sometime in the morning for which I would describe between eight and ten, or in the afternoon between like oh, we you had know, one here around one thirty and here. five. Yeah, but one thirty. Although I guess it is summer, so you know maybe maybe it's oh, it's, it's different. But what, what I don't know, Bryce, could, uh, did you uh, look this up before the show? But oh, uh, uh, what is does everybody who's on Be Real get the exact same time, or is it determined like AI style b b amongst your 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 friend group? So every, everybody in your region gets the same time, but there are three different regions that they send times to. So I think. It's like America, uh, Europe, and Africa, and then Asia. And so Eurasia. everybody in America gets the same time. Yeah, that's America. It. It's Old based America on the region you pick in the, the app. One. That's that, it, and yeah. they even tell you like we have times for the different regions. So just pick the one that's right for you. I. How many of you go on Instagram? Instagram, Instagram. Instagram. Uh, <laughs> I gave it Instagram. up. Uh, three or four years ago out of a mild annoyance and I fully expected to go back, but I just haven't gone back. My annoyance has reigned supreme. Yeah. I love Instagram. I, I, I feel like Instagram stories are when I'm happiest on social media. Uh, uh, there's people talk to me. I get to have conversations with people that I uh, wouldn't otherwise talk to. Uh, it's fairly low effort. I don't have to worry about there being a, a well actually that, you know, uh, spins me into a, a PR uh, crisis. Like I just really, Instagram is just, if it weren't for the fact that they are now trying to jam TikTok in the middle of it, uh, 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 it would be among the most, it might, it is the social network that brings me the most happiness. I will say that. What about Bryce? you? I, I, no, I don't use Instagram a lot. Um, and I, the, the FOMO that I get on Instagram is when people use it as their messenger. Um, and so I'm like, well, I guess I'll open it up. Um, but I, I've been, I, you know, I, we've been using TikTok more for, for some of the podcasts and stuff. And I've really been enjoying using TikTok and like TikTok has stories now. And, uh, Maybe or, that's where people go. Maybe, maybe. Oh, by the way, I saw that you cut out me saying rib tips as a uh, a, a, a TikTok. That's, oh, I'm sorry. Did you, you not say thank that? Thank you for that. Did you yeah. not say it? Or? Oh, I had to go sorry. right back into the archives <laughs> for that one, didn't you? It's just the top clips, just the most viewed clips. The most. Oh, of. is that was that one of the most viewed clips? That's <laughs> yes. funny. Uh, uh, yeah, no, uh, I mean, I think TikTok yeah. is 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 good. Um, um, you know, that stories concept that Snapchat really pioneered, I think, is fascinating in that it does give you in an ever expanding world where we only have more and more and more people to keep track of facebook has become onerous in that like i can't keep track of anybody i'm relying on its algorithm to give me the stuff that i care about the most uh that whatever uh tiktok is like don't even try your friends don't even matter your friends matter only if you're sharing the things that we are giving to you mm -hmm. uh instagram is somewhere kind of in in, in between but with that I think TikTok is is in a very interesting position where we're going to find out whether or not the things that they want to be like Snapchat, if they're adding stories and like Twitch, because they're adding live, mm -hmm. uh, uh, whether or not that will dilute their product. Because I think for, for Instagram, adding stories, great. Uh, adding TikTok stuff has been fairly annoying for me. Yeah. Uh, I wonder, because like IGTV is a, was similar like just video on instagram kind of just is tough for me outside of stories um so i don't know i i, I yeah i i'll check in on instagram every once every few days just i don't i mean i don't even know why I'm, i'll check maybe like i don't go through the feed <laughs> i don't yeah. care uh twitter like i have list that i use on twitter i have a list that i use you're all on it don't worry yeah um but other than that, like, and I'll go check, I'll look in like things that pop up just so I can see things, people who follow me, maybe I've never engaged with or whatever, just it's all like, I like to engage periodically with that. But like, I, like I opened up TikTok and the best description I heard, it was like the fentanyl of social media. <laughs> and 
it was it just threw a bunch of like it, you know whatever it thought of my profile what i'd like it was completely off and all this and it was like wow it was almost offensive to me um and and it's, i've nothing i nothing against the I mean, app or whatever that that's not even the offensive part the offensive part is when you train it by saying no 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 oh that's interesting no 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 oh okay oh no that's good that's good too that's good. Oh, you really get me, TikTok. That's the part that yeah. I find offensive. Yeah, no, I, yeah, I think, well, I mean, yeah, for me, it was just like, oh, I'm going to start you off with like, oh, no, I don't want to, why are you doing this? And like, why are you showing, who, what, what kind of, you know, it monster do you think that I am here? Because that, 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 that's, that's humanity, right? So you are getting, know, initially, you're getting the, the, the sampler platter. Mm -hmm. I know. And there's like, and like, listen, not that I don't have my own, like, oh, that's cool. You know, hubba hubba. But like, it was like, ah, like it was just this, like, and I didn't want to like, I don't want to train you. I don't want to, I'm the outlier. Cause it's usually successful. Uh, there's also a great book, by the way, called the attention factory about bite dance and the creation of TikTok, which I highly recommend. I mean, I've spent more time reading that book than actually on TikTok, which shows you how I approach media. But, um, I just, I don't know, man, I just sort of tapped out of most social media. Yeah. I mean, although be, I would, to, I would greatly encourage everybody to watch the Auntie Donna podcast of the South African Sam's explaining TikTok to Mark Bonanno. Uh, uh, just, just the phrase "you lingered, you lingered, Mark." <laughs> oh, that, uh, and that's why he. Yes, yes. You might not think, but you lingered. Uh, <laughs> so, uh, 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 yeah, I, I don't know. I mean, uh, Twitter. I don't know. I, I, this is my. The, it, it's the curse of the journalist that. I'm I'm going to wander TikTok or wander Twitter for the rest of my life and and just pretend like it's not a toxic uh you know a Mad Max environment where the only the only pleasure is pain. It's it's a uh, uh it's a, it's a roving hellscape but I'll never leave. I'm 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 committed to what, uh, what haunting I it. What I love about Twitter, and this can apply to other stuff too, because like there's a lot of great content TikTok and other places and I want to be downing them. It's just more Andrew's weird relationship with the world, but Twick, TikTok, one thing, but like Twitter with lists, like I I would know way more about what's going on in Ukraine than I would have through just reading regular news sites and stuff because yeah. I found some really good experts who understand this stuff. And like a day to day, I can tell you like, oh, this was the progress of the front. This is what happened here and stuff. I don't talk about it with anybody. I don't have a conversation with it because I'm just reading these experts talk about this stuff. I'm like, cool. That's what I love about t Twitter. Sir. That's what I love about Twitter is Twitter's got this opportunity to like, you find some people who know a lot, put them into a list and just go read there. And it's, it's hard. It's nothing like it. It's amazing. There is, there is some exceptional stuff on there. There is also some exceptionally stupid stuff on there. Although that becomes its own joy is that you read <laughs> the dumbest takes ever uh, uh, typed into a phone and, and uh, uh, you're like, wow, this is exceptionally stupid. Well, uh, uh, to oh. bring it back to be real, I think mm. that's what I love about it. I, I will be very surprised if there is a single uh, celebrity that is born out of be real. It seems like everything about it is built to be more introspective than extroverted. And uh, uh, that's something I, I've never seen in a social network. I could, what what I mean, to a limit extent, that was a uh, was Snapchat. Snapchat, there were social aspects of it, but it really was more in-group stuff. And you'd hear, like, you don't really hear the term Snapchat star like you do on other mediums. Right. You do, but not because it was really, it started off as, like, you and your friends. Just It was anti-social media in that point. Like, yeah. this is, that came from the point in time when the people creating stuff in the VCs, like, everybody wants to share. And these teens are like, no, I just want my friends to see it. And then that's it and go away you know and, and snapchat became a uh, a major player in chat too because it was mm -hmm. just it was a place where you actually connected and so therefore you talk to each other and blah 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 blah. but yeah that's, and I that's know a whole other thing married married to somebody who was born in another country on telegram a lot like telegrams telegram's huge right now Telegram's no. huge, uh, uh, w which I got on, I, and not to be old man gerbs, but boy, do I not totally get it. <laughs> uh, because I, I got on it during the Ukraine war because I kept hearing like, oh, there's all this stuff that's being uploaded to Telegram and, and yada, yada, yada. And I got on it and I was like, I don't know. It just seems like a messenger. Where am I supposed to find the things? I where's the know. news? I don't, where's the news Where's button? the button that brings me the latest <laughs> can, news? Can I find the dumb takes? I, I, I'm so good at finding the dumb takes. not tailored to me at all. I had that with someone who she, 
uh, lives in Europe or something, so she has WhatsApp. And, and so I had to sign up for WhatsApp. <laughs> Yeah. Uh, that's so strange. But then again, I don't know. That's the way I was with Zoom. I feel like a few years ago, someone had me on their podcast and they were like, you got to just install this other software to get on. And now, uh, uh, oops, that was Zoom. And now it's yeah. everywhere. So, uh, I mean, that, that took some special, it, special doing. Took, yeah, it was dude. a lot of time. Exactly. Yeah. I mean, woo hand was that hard to do. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I'm just telling your buddies, I'll, Mr. Solo, about it. I'm yeah. telling you, Woo, Monkey Pox is going to be VR's breakthrough moment. <laughs> Jesus uh, Christ. Hey, Apple's I got to pick it. Apple's trying to time it's, their it's AR glasses. Season Apple's two their of AR. Hacks. Season two of Hacks is very good. That whole show is very good. Um, oh, man, I thought of a thing that I was going to say, and then I forgot it. Somebody else go, and I'll see if I can remember it. Uh, uh, I've got to pick. Uh, uh, I... Uh, talked about things on the regular show, but I also want to talk about uh, Airtable, which I think is super, super good. Um, I've been doing Marble stuff, and I'm figured out making videos and uh, doing the streams, and I want to keep track of everything. So I'm, uh, I'm, I'm making an Airtable, and it's it's great. It's like a Google Sheet, but um, good. <laughs> so uh, I really dig Airtables, and if you've got something you need to organize or need a database, something that's a very easy way to get started with basics of databases um we're in a very interesting era for stand-up comedians a lot of the icons of their era have either come into controversy or become newly relevant or or have unfortunately passed away there is one titan for which i feel and there's probably a large conversation that you can have around it is not only not appreciated for the powerhouse that he is uh, but but also still alive and and uh, I think could probably still go if he if he wanted to, and that is Dennis Miller. And I listened to the Off White album uh, on Friday. Holy crap! Is his voice still as as powerful and as fresh as 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 it ever was? And nobody has really gotten to that level. I mean, there have been other kind of comedians that have had that sort of confident delivery, which is the thing about Dennis Miller is that like, he's almost not reacting to the audience at all. He is just bop, 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 like joke, 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 joke. Everything is confident. Everything is, is designed to do it, but nobody has been as smart and as well-written in the way that Dennis Miller was. Uh, uh, treat yourself to a little Dennis Miller. Nobody ever made the mark on SNL news like Dennis Miller, like that was the high point. And even, even the early days, like it was funny with Chevy Chase and all them doing their reverent stuff. But Dennis Miller, SNL News, that is to me perfection. That uh, was just- I seem to remember somebody else doing Weekend Update, but uh, uh, that's not who we're talking about I right think, now. No, I think Norm, Norm comes, uh, he is, is the, the, uh, uh, you know, the anti if, if, Dennis no, Miller. No, if Dennis no, Miller, no. If, if Dennis Miller is God, Norm is Jesus, right? Uh, like, like there, there yeah, is Norm. Norm one, one had to follow the other. That was Norm doing yeah. Norm. That was Norm doing like Norm is fuck, amazing. But as if that's Norm, Norm is Norm is. I'm saying as far as making that, making that like creating the character out of that, anything like that, I think is like like yeah, Norm. Norm. I'm a huge. I'm, I'm a bigger Norm fan than Dennis Miller fan. But I'm saying like somebody at the right moment. Like I love Dennis Miller the most when he's doing Weekend Update. Right. That's my moment. Norm, I like all the time. Like, and, if Norm was my Uber driver, I would have been, yay! You know, like, Norm, anything, anywhere is great. You know, it's funny listening to the Fly on the Wall podcast um, with uh, Dana Carvey and, and uh, Dan, uh, David Spade. You uh, find out that the entire, like, David Spade, Adam Sandler, Chris Rock, they were all brought in by Dennis Miller. Dennis Miller scouted all of them and, and was the one that really, really pushed them to uh to to lord michael wow. so he he very much was kind of the father of that generation wow pretty impressive uh, my pick i've been using this now for a couple months been very happy i don't have a code for you i just like it it's blue apron hey simple blue aprons the Easy. service where yep you, you pay more money than you would spend in a grocery store, but then they send you the ingredients and a recipe. And if you live with somebody who is happy to cook, it's wonderful. <laughs> so we're up to like doing like three a week, whatever. And so I've been enjoying Blue Apron a lot. 
or if you yourself like to cook and wish you just had a sous chef, then yeah, <laughs> it's they, pretty great. You still get to cook. I mean, if you like, they just make cooking easier. Sure we've, about we've that? Done stuff like I don't know. I, but yeah, uh, so <laughs> sure that's why. Uh, yeah, but no, it's been been very because it's uh, great. I'm actually eating vegetables now. Who knew? Look at that. Oh, oh Mr. Vegetables. <laughs> And your vegetables are mean. All right, that's it for veggie things. That's the last of our veggie tales. Exactly. <laughs> Speaking it's of Jesus. It's been after. Now, if you excuse me, I have to go watch two episodes of Obi-Wan. Yeah! Yeah! You didn't even watch them all. Is that Disney them all. princess? Where is she? Ugh, it stinks. Did she? So somebody says, my friends keep telling me putting together the Blue Apron ingredients isn't cooking. All I know is if you take the raw chicken and the spices, the things that come to your house, and you don't cook them, you will die. (laughs) There we go. (laughs) QED, motherfuckers. Yeah, I, 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 it's, it's, it's literally, is it cooking if all the ingredients are next to each other on the store shelf? Uh, All right. Did you, if you didn't kill the chicken yourself? All right, everybody. I I have to watch bad TV. Bye. Goodbye, everybody. We'll be back. Later. Bye.